Babylon and before Babylon. I Brilliant. Okay, so we've started recording. So um, two hello, people Julie. entered oh. waiting room. Okay. Two people in. Okay. We got them in. Yeah. Um, if anyone else is in the waiting room, they'll probably um, see. Look, this is all I've got. I've, uh, I've I haven't even got a. I've got. A, I might have to drink this out of a mug. Um, but usually I have Andy with me uh, to to constantly oh, yeah. give me drinks, and I don't have him tonight. I'm on Aww. my own, so I'm having to like. I'm having to really like rough it. I'm just going to start doing that anyway. Um, uh. Welcome everybody. Oh, and welcome Tess, our beautiful um, Ooh, special another guest person. tonight. Oh, okay, okay darling. Just let I'll tell you what. I'll back... Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, Claire's saying just drink from the bottle. Yeah, I should really. I should. Uh, a nice shout. Um, there's free drinks tonight at the after party, so I'm trying to sort of just like temper myself. Um, but I shall um, stop talking about my social life and talk about you. This is your mastermind. It's your once a month. Um, chance to learn something new about upgrading your network and making sure that you're getting um, getting in front of the right people for you and your businesses. So um, tonight we're joined by our very special guest, Tess Sal, who, um, who I'll tell you all about in one minute. And what I will do before that is just say, we are doing this in two sections because we have somebody else that I'd like to do and talk about the US. Um, obviously tonight we're talking about, um, I've pre-warned everyone, this is to, to connect with overseas, particularly the Chinese wealthy. So in this room, if I give Tess a bit of background as well, in this room today, we have people from a variety of industries. We have obviously property people because I can't seem to like, I, I don't ever want to leave them. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying they are my people. That is who I am with every single day. It's part of my business. But we also have people that have very high level health and well-being businesses. Um, we also have people that have um, products and services that will fit this demographic. So you'll be very glad to know, or maybe not, that Tess is actually from a background of very high level uh, retail background, aren't you, Tess? Yes, luxury goods, diamonds, exactly. <laughs> exactly. million dollar Good diamonds. Money. <laughs> only, only millionaires yeah. can afford kind of diamonds <laughs> yeah we're talking like serious seriously um high high end stuff so um this is this is going to be we've designed this to be relevant to people that are looking for investors buyers etc it's all the same demographic actually but the things that um, Tess is going to talk to you tonight about and of course this is a massive subject you that yeah. this is like you could do a degree in this but we're gonna <laughs> you know it's a lot it's a lot to fit in so what I'll do is just talk about my little bit first if that's okay Tess I'm just going to sort of do a little bit of my own of um background into yeah why I've chosen this subject so I I personally love um overseas investors um some people call them foreign investors overseas investors whatever you want to call them i like to say overseas um because often they have levels of wealth that we just don't even consider in this country particularly the uk um our definition of high net worth individuals much lower um than pretty much the rest of the world um it's almost like 10 times less than than america um and and there are different parts of the world, China particular, um, particularly lots of, actually lots of places, oh, sorry, my alarm's going off. Um, lots of other places you wouldn't think of. There's a lot of money in India actually as well. There's a huge, there's, there's, there's parts of pretty much almost every country that have these incredibly wealthy areas. And we're looking to connect with those people. Now, um, there's some other benefits of working with overseas investors. One is that if you're looking to scale your business, so perhaps it's a, say it's a retreat business or say it's something where you can potentially franchise. Um, if you have connections all over the world, you can start actually practically putting your business out there, merging with other companies that don't have a presence in the UK. So, um, and also likewise, you don't have, if you don't have a presence in, I don't know, Australia or America or whatever, by doing mergers which people are very and you'll be really surprised at how open people are to this because it's very exciting um that's a way of scaling now i've already started doing this with high net connect i've actually found people and you know who you are i'm wondering actually 
Um, who have we got here tonight? Have we got anyone that's uh, doing that for me tonight? No, we don't particularly, apart from Tess. Um, you're actually looking to um, connect with people that are already there, set up and waiting. And when we talk about what our worth is and, and how our inner, inner world has to start to reflect our outer world, you'll be surprised at how much worth you are to people from different parts of the world sometimes we get caught up in our own bubble oh hello did i hear somebody uh, we get caught up in our own bubble and um i think everyone hears from the uk pretty much um but if you're not that's even better because if you're based in the uk and you have access to um another another country another demographic as well you'll be even more advantage because it is absolutely amazing to have people from different nationalities in your team it really really helps you connect with these people so that's an obvious way of doing it um the other um advantages as well is that um you just you become you've got to start leveraging the things that we've got going for us that you probably take for granted every day i've become the kind of pet in one of my masterminds because i'm the only girl from uh, england there and they think i'm really posh which is really ironic because i come from like quite a rough part of <laughs> like east um i say east london it's essex i come from quite a rough part of essex but they love my accent they love what i do they love where i've been to school and, and my um my university and the things that we have in this country we should really leverage so if we're looking at property um, and we're looking at our amazing universities we really do have so many things going for us you just literally have to put the words like oxford cambridge mayfair already internationally these things are known so it's so important that you know how to leverage this with a with a um, an overseas audience because just in the same if you're in the same way and you're at a networking meeting or something and you've got someone who's got their head office in new york you're suddenly going to start like imagining all the millions of things that you've heard over the years um uh <laughs> shame we look mexican I just read in some of the comments <laughs> and it is a, it is a, you have all if you're living in the UK you already have massive advantages especially with property um, and um, and all kinds of things actually to get ahead and develop your reputation as their UK representative if you have an amazing experience or well-being or whatever this is going to sound really obvious um, but I've got a very good friend who does incredibly expensive expensive experiences so sort of like um i guess events very very high level events and these events are actually um priced at sort of they start at like fifteen thousand pounds for maybe like a day um they go up to about half a million for a week if you have the whole full-on shebang and all of her clients pretty much are american um and they can't get enough of it they absolutely can't get enough of it and if you put again continue to think about the things that are really really valuable in the eyes of other nationalities that that they don't have the history the things that we have going for us if you put that in your marketing material it really does go a long way i have to say just just um i know obviously i've built up a reputation here anyway and it's not about overseas investors but the word mayfair i'm doing that mayfair event right i've sold out I'm having to find a bigger room because I've got people all over LinkedIn, all over the world telling me, like, how can we get involved? Can we do something over here? Can we do one in, um, can we do one in uh, America? Can we do one in, um, someone asked me, can we do one in California? I know that's America <laughs> and my job is not that bad, but it was just like, how are they finding me? And I can only imagine it's because Mayfair is on the Monopoly board and it's just, it's just a little keyword that they have actually locked into and associating me with all of this stuff that they want. So no matter what it is, if you're looking for investors, if you're looking for um, wealthy clients, use what we've got, leverage it, exploit it, because we have got a huge amount going for us here. Is there anyone here that's not UK based actually? Um, just interrupt me, I don't think there is. And is there anyone here that already has links with another country? I'm trying to look at your surnames now and work out if any of you have got any uh, oh yes yeah oh based in italy and france yeah well if you've got links with other countries as well that gives you massive massive advantage you can get into the psychology of 
those people. And even though we are, you know, um, we, we are all the same, our cultures are very different, which is what was me quite neatly on to what Tess is going to talk to you about, um, is actually under, oh, oh, Christina, yeah, links with Hungary. See, this is the thing, we've got some people in our networks that are fantastically connected to different countries. And and it is, oh, and a partner with someone in Singapore. Singapore. Um, oh, sorry, did somebody? Singapore, perfect. Yeah. There's um, a Slovakian family. Yeah, at least oh, yeah. I'm doing back as well. I'm back as with all the Muslim, um, so Sharia and finance investment. Perfect. 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 And that means you have that deep understanding of what they need. Um, we have uh, my partner's business partners um, from, he's actually from Kenya, but he's a Muslim. Um, and the people that he introduces us to, they won't do anything to do with loans. So, um, and you can offend, you can offend people with, um, bringing them things that aren't appropriate for them, especially when it feels like you've not respected their, their belief system. So belief systems and having an appreciation internationally for different belief systems is massively important when you start talking. Um, even if you get caught out, sometimes I get caught out, I'm in a networking meeting, especially the ones I keep sending you in the mastermind uh, WhatsApp, and they're like two in the morning and stuff. And actually, I'm not, I'm not suggesting everyone changes your entire timetable, but every now and again, I do make the effort to go along to these things that are in the middle of the night. Because again, that shows my, my groups and my masterminds and my networks what I'm prepared to do to make those connections. And so I go the extra mile to do that. And that means that they think of me first. Um, not many people will get up in the middle of the night to do that. So um, you've got to think about how much is this connection worth to you? How much is this group of people um, potentially worth to you? And make, make the effort. Um, I was in, a, I was in a, at dinner today, sorry, at lunch today, and um, obviously Expert Empires, it's a long story short, it's a, it's a group of experts in all different industries coming together, looking to scale up to seven figures, eight figures, nine figures. And it's all from, sort of, it's for experts, basically. And we sat around a table. Um, we were just talking, we were just talking about how important it is to make the effort with networking and how when somebody says, um, OK, so I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell you this. I don't know, advertising package or this marketing course or this whatever it is, and it could be three or four thousand pounds, or I'm gonna look after your digital marketing for like two thousand. Oh, sorry, my alarm's going off. The alarm is for this. So, sorry, don't know how to turn it off. Um, we don't attribute enough value to networking. So I said to the people on the table, they said, you know, we're spending all this money on all of these funnels and whatever professionals to help us bring business in. Um, and, I, and I said, well, I, I'll spend £10,000 a year on going to networking events and upgrading my network because I'd rather do that than rely on some, something else that may or may not bring me results because I know a £600 ticket to a networking event, not that I'm selling you a networking event for 600 pounds, by the way, I'm just saying I'm going to a few in the next couple of months, putting money into these things and also going the extra mile, going along to the um, overseas conferences that are in the middle of the night. Don't do it all the time. Don't ruin your like routine and your home life. But these are the things that make a massive difference. Oh, um, Tess, there's a couple yeah. of people in the waiting room, sweetheart. I oh, uh, oh yeah. I see. No, okay, don't worry, don't worry. It's okay. okay. They, get, um, they get told off and fuck. They get detention because they're late, so it's fine. Okay, I've let them it's in all now. Yeah. <laughs> Who's on the detention list? I'm just having a little look here. Alan. We shall have to get the cane out. Um, and there's some other people. There's steps. Okay, so I've um, I've just kind of given you a little bit of background. Why it's really it's really really important to to think internationally. I know some people here are already doing so, but if you're not, I would suggest you do, because even if the least you do is make sure that your LinkedIn profile is connected, not just with your UK people, get those connections out there, make sure you kind of get, get everywhere um, and, and understand and appreciate the prestige this country already holds. Now, Europe, um, it was a LinkedIn post, I can't remember who wrote it, it was something to do with Forbes, I think. 
um, the um, Europe has named, I think Donna might have seen this post, Europe's named UK is basically the number one place to invest. Um, it's being looked at by institutional investors um, to the to a very very light it's just really really hot at the moment so if you've got opportunities in the uk um for investment uh uk trading report yes thank you <laughs> couldn't remember but the uk is really really hot at the moment um and we won't get political about it but you know the background behind that so um as i said i shall start i think i've probably convinced you let's let's think about things at an international level appreciate what you've got make sure you leverage the UK, if you can, if you're UK, or whatever connections you do, leverage that in your marketing material when you talk about things. It's so, so valuable. I, I play the, you know, English rose, even though, um, you know, I'm a child. You Oxford. are. It still works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it still works. It works. And it's effective. So I shall now bring you over to our lovely host who has, as um, people that have just joined, she has massive experience in dealing with super wealthy people. Um, um, having dealt with the highest level of like, I can't even describe it, Tess, the, the diamonds. Um, what was that massive diamond that you were dealing with? The one that was, I think it was a famous one. Was it Harry? Yes, um, the, that's the... Um... Uh, the Hearts of the Ocean, that's the one in the Smithsonian M Museum. That's the origin of the Titanic diamond. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's the, the story that is work? based on that. That is, I believe it's 48 million US dollars. <laughs> yeah, I remember this number because I was making a presentation to a group of Chinese CEOs with our uh, uh, with my CEO, you know, at the time I worked for Harry Winston, we were trying to show off our brand and one of the Chinese client asked, how much is it? We we're saying, well, it's 48 millions and then the clients like ready to buy wow. or something. We said, no, it's in a museum. It's a, it's a charity PR <laughs> legacy. Wow. Right. Wow, 40 million. That's the thing. And I think just being around those people and get, oh, sorry, yeah, Ian's just uh, did it as well. If, you, if you're not speaking, um, is it okay just to mute? Because there's a little bit of background noise. Um, so Tess is obviously allowed to talk, but yeah, everyone else, I'm just seeing who is. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's Sonia. Um, Sonia, sweetheart, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, oh, uh, actually, Tess, you can actually mute Sonia okay if you go, if you go to her name click okay on I'm gonna ask you guys to unmute <laughs> all right and then you can mute all I think and me that sounds better yeah sorry I've just done that yeah <laughs> oh thanks Sonia sorry I didn't know if you'd forgotten that we <laughs> I didn't no, know if you'd forgotten you, you might be on my... on mute so I had to go in the other room but lovely to oh, see you sorry. You look gorgeous. Oh. Yeah. oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Hello, darling. Hello, you look amazing. Um, sorry, yes. Yeah, so we were just <laughs> Tess was just trying to put everyone on mute. If you don't yeah. mind, if everyone doesn't mind muting yourselves and then I'll right. say Tess a job and then she can and then you can carry on, my darling. Okay. I'll mute myself as well. Um, no, current. no, then I can't hear you. I'm gonna unmute you. Unmute you. Okay, we we sorted. That sounds good. I can't hear any background noise. That's perfect. Yeah, I just pushed a bunch of buttons, so I don't know who can <laughs> mute it now. <laughs> That's what I do. You just disappeared for I five do. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's all I do, Tess. So, um, so. Anyway, I think the best thing is probably most of you, uh, if you were if you were following me, was it last year, Tess? We did something yes. together. Um, it was last year. I think it was last Christmas, the last October time. So some of you may know Tess already. Um, however, things have moved on, and Tess is developing her. She's already got her own high net um, high net mastermind. So remind me of the name of your mastermind. Have you changed it? It's the same, right? High net worth prospecting with Chinese. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So you actually were doing this before I was doing this. And that's how I found Tess because right. I actually, um, I, I just, do you know, I think I just Google search. High I net worth. Something right. like high net worth 
clubs or high net worth training and Tess came up. So you are my inspiration. If it wasn't for you, this group Aww. would not exist. So, so wow. Tess really does know what she's talking about. Um, and I do, I do highly recommend you go and have a look at what, what she's got. Um, in fact, Tess, you can tell us at the end of, um, end of this session all the things that you've got going on and stuff. Because as I said, Tess does training as well. So Tess, please tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to work with these super wealthy um, people. Well, of course. So um, I've, uh, my background is I, so in my before High Net Worth Academy, I work with Harry Winston Diamond. And that's the jeweler for Hollywood celebrities. And we have like <clears throat> on average, like million dollar diamonds that targets high net worth individuals, not just from America, but literally around the world. We have clients from Dubai, of course, Middle East and the Chinese from London, Beverly Hills from Hong Kong. And they fly over the world when they do shopping. A Chinese will do shopping in Beverly Hills and the Middle East shopping in London. So we are used to that kind of clientele. That's the same way they they shop for properties. So I get involved actually at the beginning of the rise of the Chinese, uh, wealthy Chinese, because my boss, which is the CEO of Harry Winston, he, so he just got on board. He flew to Beijing to meet Beijing Salon's VIP client. And uh, the salon said this client had bought many things from us recently. She just purchased a 20 million, you know, yellow diamond from us. This is our number one VIP. And the CEO flew all the way there with the jet lag, with the suit, right? The CEO is the should be the number one sales of the company. And then the client came and it's a 16 year old Chinese girl. He's like, what? And then this is going on a lot in China. Of course, this is a rich girl doing, you know, transaction purchasing, you know, of course, parents are backing her. That's when the whole industry, you know, luxury industry is the very first to feel that the weather of, you know, the booming of Chinese market. That's when we like, we, we got to tap into this, uh, this market. They're going to take over the world. Actually, the, the Chinese uh, client who asked about the Hope Diamond at the presentation, at the same presentation, we did a cocktail with them in a New York store. They purchased on the same night uh, in British pounds, it's uh, 380 thousand uh watches just watches for them is like yeah want to thank you for hosting this event over one wow. night and within a week they traveled to uh ball harbor and mentioned this event and bought another half a million of us dollars of jewelry that's why they they talked to new york so we got this group of chinese ceos say they had met our ceo <laughs> and they listened to a presentation wow. and bought these right so uh what i did it at harry winston is global client development so i can show you you a little picture what I do right here. Make a bad picture can better tell what I do. Let me. Okay. So at um, Harry Winston, uh, I work in the New York headquarter. I do global client development. Basically, in plain words, my job is to send clients to our stores worldwide, especially the high net worth clients and Chinese clients. So prior to that, I worked for Jaguar Cause China and also helped set up the HSBC Premier China. That's the very first uh, banking service for the high-end rich Chinese Chineses. So um, at the so in my current High Net Worth Academy, I provide coaching and online courses targeting how to prospect and sell to Chinese investors, and also how to find, sell, and retain high net worth individuals. This refers to any nationalities but the Chinese, because the Chinese are a very different category in terms of what they need. So at the end of, so feel free to ask me any questions. So um, in case there are gentlemen who are not quite sure what Harry Winston the price point the target audience is, is this is the the gift that the Canada government present to the royal couple when they when they go to Canada it's a Harry Winston brooch so um so William sort of have the very typical look of the couple when they buy the million dollar ring the man is like <laughs> did I pay for that why am I holding this and the woman is always super excited this is a typical <laughs> dyna dynamic you will see in the couple's <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so this is me at Harry picture. Winston. Um, so I built a global referral program at Harry Winston from scratch. So Harry Winston go from no Chinese clients to we have referral partners all over the world sending rich Chinese from mainland China to stores worldwide. And I also trade our sales executives because they're like, have these clients in my store, can you train me how to sell to them? So I also lead a global Chinese client committee, uh, telling the VP of marketing, VP of sales, like how to present marketing materials, what you should put on the poster, what celebrity there are Chinese would resonate to. So, so I would like to first thank you all for doing that survey. It's tremendously helpful for what I can show you today. So the, the top three most interested uh, questions you have is obviously you want to understand who are they and then how to communicate with them and then how to find them and this is what I will talk about today. So let's get started. So the Chinese investors, I want to just give you a taste of what kind of profile they are like based on you know the recent stories so you will see 18 year old Chinese student living a 5 million flat that's bought by his parents uh, in London. And you will see Shanghai-based buyer. They were bought you know, over half a million of apartment, sight and scene. And there are some Chinese investors. They have now becoming more and more used to tend to purchase directly, purchase property from China. And actually 22% of the acquisition were brought sight unseen by the overseas investors. So with what's going on in China now, because the Chinese government is doing more and more drastic political and economic changes in the past year, you might have seen in the news. So the wealthy Chinese are really urgently trying to move their asset, their cash, overseas in the format of properties in the countries where they think is a safe haven. There's also other potentials. So Chinese investors at this moment in history, they need you more than you think. So uh, one challenges with dealing with Chinese investors from their experience is that they're not happy with the communications that they got because they feel like there's a lack of understanding of who they actually are and what they are looking for. But it's more like packaged as a whole group of Chinese investors. They are supposed to like the same uh, eight number. They're supposed to like the same food, but every investor like to be treated as a unique individual. And this is exactly actually what you mentioned in the survey. So I think this is a smart group. You, you get right to the point. So I'm gonna get started with introducing to you the three type of Chinese investors. So the first is to meet the Chinese parents. So the Chinese, uh, the real estate investment uh, in UK is largely driven by wealthy Chinese who have kids studying in the UK. Let me move this so I can see this. Yeah. So uh, the, the uh, age of those kids arriving in UK is ranged from eight years old to about 18. So to this group of uh, prospects, the most important thing is the high ranking schools nearby and the neighborhood safety. That's what Liz mentioned really take advantage of the resource you have. The UK education is a selling point for real estate, for, for property investor. So for these Chinese parents, uh, their in return on investment um, theme, theme is they are going to get free education. What does that mean? They're gonna buy the property, the kids go to school about 10 years, the whole process. And in 10 years with the capital appreciation, they sell the property, many times some don't and that that capital appreciation is can pay for the, the tuition so in that way it's like paying for cambridge for free so that's the whole scenario of uh, the investing for this kind of parents so of course there is also potential immigration need for uh, their children and for themselves so if you have information about you know property how does that help qualify for immigration any tax benefit that will be tremendously helpful to international investors including the chinese investors and the second type of 
Okay, so with, yes, this I just mentioned, oh, sorry. The secret touch to help this kind of client is to help them execute. If you can prepare a spreadsheet because they're doing this return on investment calculation, right, the capital appreciation, the education, help them do that. They will really, really appreciate you and do focus on the qualities of the universities near the property. And also it's important that, um, make sure you understand it's the universities that the Chinese parents think is good, not what you think is good, because um, I know there are ways that, you know, you might think, well, you know, actually this university, the overall ranking is better, but uh, is lower, but actually this specific subject, they are the, the leading uh, academic institution in this area, but that's not how Chinese uh, parents think. They look for, they focus more on the overall ranking and Chinese mothers will literally think, take it for granted, take it verbally, like number four is absolutely better than number five. So don't try to change their way of viewing what university is best. If they, they just want Cambridge or Oxford, they think they're, they're the, the top two. You just don't try to argue with them <laughs> with that. <laughs> Tess, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Are there any particular subjects that are recurring themes uh, popular that they want to come here and study? Um, what it would be is the it very visa. Broad? Yeah, it's quite broad, but I don't think there is a lot because UK is now one of the top destinations for because UK is competing with US to uh, attract Chinese students with US of course now visa is getting more and more challenging with the US China relations but UK has remained one of the top competitive ones I don't see any specific challenges with that there's no so sort of academic subject of course that yeah they have to go through the application everything, but there are tons of agencies that help them with that. I mean, they okay. face the same challenge as other students face, you know, academically, you need to prove yourself, but that's nothing specific toward, you know, the purpose of immigrating or moving to UK and purchasing a real okay. estate, right? No real oh, theme did you mean in the subject. subjects. Sorry. The subjects that these youngsters nice. wanted to study. So is it medicine? Is it? Yeah, in, other, in other words, what's the career strategy for, for quite a few of them? Uh, they're mostly in, interested in finance, econ mm. economy, economic. yeah, STEM yeah. related. Yeah, right. Definitely STEM related. I have to say, when I was at university studying statistics at UCL, um, I was the only English girl in the entire year and uh, every other person was Chinese or Indian because they all were so good at maths, <laughs> so fantastic. And, and ev pretty much every single one of them has gone on to, I'm very lucky to have them as my friends actually, because they went straight into being high net worth individuals if they weren't already. And um, she li they've, they've literally all gone into economics, absolutely every single one. So yeah, I, just from my personal experience, that's my, that's what I would say. Okay, so the type, the type two investors are the hands of return on investment investors. They spend more of their time in China and their main purpose is to diversify their assets. So actually they spend 20, uh, sorry, it's 12%, 5% of their wealth into overseas assets. And London is considered one of the most popular investment destination because of the stability of the investment and political environment, which is very, it's becoming more and more, you know, uh, hard to predict in China. So for these investors, they also want good feng shui because it's very likely, they know the market too, it's very likely they're going to resell it or rent it to another Chinese buyer, Chinese investor. They know feng shui is a key, uh, you know, break or make 
make it make it or break it point. And also, Sarah, you, you're usually looking at mid range properties at that range. And so when they first approach you, they will have endless questions that's going to break your neck. But their main purpose is they want to test you with this kind of investors earning their trust is key, because usually in the second year, they're going to come back to you with some wanting to buy much, much more properties. So be patient with the first year. And with this investors, the key is to never judge by the look. Uh, sometimes uh, they, may, they may dress like Mao Zedong, but <laughs> they are testing you. <laughs> and also as a tip, if somebody really dressed like a Mao Zedong, <laughs> that probably shows their, their background or their the kind of social group they're in, then it's, they really, you hit the jackpot. If somebody actually do show up dressing like him. <laughs> wow. Right. Um, because they're usually related to the government or you know the deals. Oh wow! Right. And the third type of Chinese uh, investors are the Chinese entrepreneurs. They usually come to UK because they want business expansion or like looking for overseas office or say like a warehouse. They may come to you a look around doing a residential uh, property open house, but then started you know mentioning uh, commercial properties. So they also do care about good feng shui for business because it's it's a, to ensure the business will go smoothly. So with this kind of entrepreneurs, the key is to mention asset protection. Um, as you may heard from the news now, the successful entrepreneurs in China, their asset may uh, be totally taken over by the government one day. So a lot of them are starting to uh, move their assets overseas in the formats of overseas acquisition, overseas expansion. So it's really important for them to know that the business is is safe here. The, the UK has a legal uh, economic system that's you know stable and safe. And that's what they you need to, you know, again, you know, this is the advantage you have. You may take them for granted for but for many investors, overseas investors, this is a strong big reason why they want to invest in properties overseas. Mm -hmm. So in terms of communicating with this three types of investors. There are three common mistakes that I see again and again. To, people do also ask me a lot. The number one is that you're too slow. Though the Chinese investor would not be offended or stop doing business with you because you hold the chopstick the wrong way or you don't understand Chinese culture. They are first and foremost business person. They care about, you know, speed, ROI. So Chinese investors don't want to wait. For example, uh, you need to always be able to take action and respond. So if they uh, text you or email you in the China in your evening, your midnight, they do expect to have an answer within 24 hours turnaround. And they don't really like the idea of, you know, I will be back after my vacation. Although you can take vacation, but you need to let them know that I'm working on this. You might expect to get an answer you know, about this time. So um, otherwise they will lose interest really fast if you don't respond in time, because if they feel you can't catch up with their pace, they will, they're gonna lose interest. And the second mistake is I actually see a great question from the survey. This is the same question that I hear a lot uh, from other industry that work with wealthy Chinese is the Chinese seem to only wanna talk to them within themselves and it's hard to warm them up. So well, small talk is also important to warming up Chinese. The key is to pick the right topic. So in terms of real asset investors, I would say the golden topic, safe topic is always talk about the children. So you can ask them what is going on with the kids? How old are they? How many times have they been in UK? What are they studying? So this will help you resonate with the Chinese investors, but also it will give you a whole, open up a whole new flow of information. You'll be surprised how much Chinese clients and investors are actually willing to talk to you. Um, although they may look shy at the very beginning, but slowly, shortly, they will tell you everything. So the, if you want to extra booster that conversation, yes. So 
always talking about the sacrificing parents. This is every Chinese parent's favorite topic. They will just go on and on. They will tell you what they have sacrificed to send them here. You will learn about their business. Everything will be a natural result of this topic. So although my mom might not be very happy I'm saying this here, but this is a wonder <laughs> topic. <laughs> So this is golden. <laughs> yeah, this is a golden. Just just try that and yeah. uh, they will re resonate with you. Keep telling you more than you you realize you can. <laughs> <laughs> I think this might resonate with other investors from East Asia, maybe from India, Korea, um, Thailand too. So this applied to many other East Asian uh, nationality <laughs> investors as well. So this, the third mistake is that you did not do enough feng shui homework, um, because if you get a Chinese client excited, you know, they're drooling over your property, they looked around and realized something went wrong, the window is in the wrong position, the bed is facing the wrong position, and they lose interest, and you have to do the research again. So, or if you, you invest in a property and realize, you know, it's, after finish, you realize it's facing the wrong direction and there's nothing you can do at that point. So feng shui is very important to increase your the investment on the RI because many, especially the wealthy Chinese, the more wealthy, the older they are, the more they're into the spiritual, the elements of the business, of the property. So they're willing to pay an average percent of 16% more for a property with good feng shui. And as you can see, also 36% say they won't even work with an agent uh, with no knowledge of feng shui because it's just very hard to, you know, it's time consuming, right? Just to, to communicate, help you understand what do they want because they don't want to waste their time looking at the property they're not going to invest in. So here's, I'd say feng shui is a funny name, but serious sales tool. And what you can do is to try to have a basic understanding of the feng shui principles and also how apply it, how to apply it in the design principles, especially um, you know, when, when you stage a property, uh, how do you present it to the Chinese buyers, Chinese investors, and this, a few Chinese traditional beliefs. And also the thing is when you actually deal with Chinese, it's the same with education. Don't try to change their mind. Say if they hear uh, water running sound you know, nearby or they, they don't like it, if you try to say, oh, you, this is actually good luck you know, flowing in, don't try to change their mind. They will be so offended. If they already believe in something, uh, you need to agree with that and go with that. And if you're not sure, yeah, just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> it's the safest. And <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about how to find and approach these investors. So I would mention it's, first of all, you need to look into referrals and word of mouth. When I mean referral, I mean, I don't mean referral from the client. I mean, referral by the potential uh, business partners. They also work with Chinese high net worth clients that they may give you the business. It's the most important tool for prospecting high net worth clients, regardless of the nationality. Um, this is an area where, you know, internet digital marketing cannot replace traditional networking and referral because the rich is not scouting like Liz mentioned actually on, on the internet. They're not scouting on the internet looking for a financial manager, looking for a property manager, investors. So to do referral, this is how Harry Winston go from zero Chinese clients to a pipelines of Chinese clients everywhere to the stores. Okay. So the first step is you want to identify the right referral partners. Basically, who do you think will have rich Chinese? So I will give you just an example. Um, for, for the Chinese parents investors, you can think about the school's consultancy services for parents, the immigration consultancy services. They help Chinese parents decide what school they should apply, what legal or ac academic procedure they have to go through. And then naturally, the next uh, thing that those parents think about is to buy a property, is immigration. So these three subjects always tie to together, uh, education, immigration, and property investment. So these are very good potential uh, referral 
partners that you can reach out to to see um, they may even have a branch um, focusing on helping with the uh, the property need. They would probably know what's, what are the property next to a certain uh, universities. So these are the people you can consider reaching out to to establish a referral partnership. So, so this is what I call, um, I have been using a system over the years at Harry Winston, a high net worth brainstorming system. So the way I brainstorm referral partners is because I use a framework, uh, I segment them by category. I will ask myself if, you know, for a Chinese high net worth individual, what are the people or the industries that touch their life, touch their life from the beginning to the end in a week, right? They may go to great business conferences. They may, you know, think about their kids' education, right? They will think about assets, uh, investment. They may have their own alumni club. So this is how, what it allows me to, find so many referral partners that the store keep asking me tests i mean i'm say my the london store director on bond street say tess i've been in this industry here for 20 years how come i don't know these people exist i say well <laughs> this is how i <laughs> brainstorm these people and just reach out to them you know so i i do this by category so i don't miss any so it's a systemat systematic way to keep brainstorming reach out to more and more people and without losing track of them so, um, so the next step is that you prepare an irresistible offer for your Chinese partner. So you need to first identify who will be interested to work with you, to refer clients to you. I say, for example, if that person, for example, if your business, if it's a business owner or that person's role or business is driven by sales, they are more hungry and more likely to take action. And but if, say, they are more in a marketing role, they're also interested in clients, but in a different perspective, they may not be incentivized by by commission, they may want a different kind of a more marketing format to collaborate with you. So the key is you need to not just find them, you need to study what they want. Sometimes they have websites, sometimes they don't have a website. You just need to find a way to connect with them and chat with them. You need to find out what matters to them and what matters to their client. You need to provide value to both, right? And evaluate what you are willing to offer. Are you in the position to offer commission or something different? So each case it's different, but you need to brainstorm based on the understanding of your referral partner. And the third is that then you approach and negotiate with them. So this is based on you, the success of the previous step. Once you understand what they want, then you are in a better position to attract them to work with you. And of course, with the Chinese uh, partners, I would say uh, they are, in a way, they really want this kind of incentive, but they may not tell you immediately in the first response. In a way, Chinese have a much longer testing phase then I would say you're the typical Western business partners. They may actually want to gauge how what, what other collaboration format you have. So usually their response may not be so direct or clear immediately, like a yes or no. So, and the, the other approach, once you get started with a few Chinese leads from the referral pipeline, um, it will also be easier for you to get referrals from your Chinese clients because the word of mouth is much more important to Chinese than to the other demographic. For example, like a Chinese would, would tweet their trust their uncle on how to uh, fix their teeth than a dentist, you know, than a professional expert because, you know, the, the friends and family advice is just play a huge role in making important decisions. Mm. And the second way to you reach out to Chinese, wealthy Chinese, especially the entrepreneur, is to use uh, Facebook advertising. Oh, someone raised a hand. Yeah, um, that was that was me, Tess. Okay. Um, okay. Just just going back to that last slide, um, I'm finding basically uh, through the brainstorming sessions of basically what touches life, but um, as far as maybe what they're specific personal interest may be in the context of partnering, investing, whatever the situation may be. Leaving aside real estate and property, has there uh, or is there a trend in any other particular marketplaces 
verticals or sectors that the Chinese are specifically looking at um, predominantly in the Western world. So your, let me rephrase your question. Uh, so you say other than property, what are the yeah. other things the Chinese are interested that, in the Western That are really world? interesting, which are interesting to them, yeah. I would say it's definitely education. Education is the equivalent of property investment in terms of, in the mindset of investing. Because right. children and their own assets are the two most important assets of a wealthy Chinese. And uh, when they take care of their children's education, because Chinese see education as a, a form of investment. So these are the two most, in, most important things for Chinese investor business, I mean. Okay. Right. Okay. So for Facebook, uh, so face, first of all, Facebook is banning China. Um, that's why the Chinese entrepreneur use VPN, especially if say they have uh, import export business or they have international um, client partnership contracts. So, and the advantage is that no one else will be advertising. Uh, so you have very few competition because very few people would actually uh, think about this. So uh, they're, uh, say, I know a lot of wealthy Chinese, they, they do use VPN. And the good thing is people who you can reach via the VPN are most likely to read English already if they have overseas business connections. So the key to increase the performance of your Facebook advertising is you need to prioritize what Chinese investors care about. Like I said, for the parents, you emphasize the quality of UK education, uh, the neighborhood for the uh, hands of investors, you know, focus on, you know, the stability of the UK, uh, uh, the investment, um, the investment um, environment, right? That your assets don't just disappear. You can impl imply that and understand uh, what Chinese people, you know, in terms of the, uh, you know, the down payment, the, the feng shui. So they, they will understand, well, this person clearly understand what I want. So this will help you resonate with the Chinese client. So they do expect to have a more, uh, pleasant, smooth communication process with you. And it's also important to have a call to action. You either, you tell them what to do. They either uh, enter their email address or give you their WeChat numbers. And also you have a follow-up plan. So I think, you know, it's not about, you know, let me uh, craft a, a Chinese copy and put it on website, but you actually don't have a plan or assistance, somebody to help you, uh, you know, read or interact in Chinese because then the Chinese in a way, because you're, you're, you're lying, right? The Chinese client think you speak Mandarin, but then you respond, you don't, then they actually become much more disappointed. Uh, so you need to have a follow plan when the leads come in or when they have the email, how are you going to follow up? Uh, present to them what they want. And another way to uh, communicate smoothly with Chinese client is use WeChat. It's a free app. It's similar to WhatsApp, but with much more functions that Chinese people prefer to use. For example, Chinese people like to uh, use voice message a lot. <laughs> um, for example, it's best for one-on-one -on -one conver uh, conversation. For example, you did your initial reach outreach via the email and then the Chinese clients may say, uh, suggest you let's move on to WeChat to do you know short day-to-day -day conversation. So Chinese use WeChat much more frequently than email, uh, but for formal business, say if you're doing your initial outreach, proposing a uh, referral partnership or presenting yourself, email is still the more uh, formal choice of communication. So I know it's a huge topic, so I, I, uh, I tried to squeeze in three, <laughs> answer all your three questions today. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm wondering, so next, do you have any questions? Um, hi, Tess. We do have yeah. quite a few questions. In oh, there you go. Okay. Can I yes. talk? Yes, yes. Hi, oh, Tess. yes, so go ahead. So go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Tess. My name's Iram. Um, Tess, I got in contact with um, some Hong Kong investors and um, they were looking for Oxford and Cambridge, but only developments. 
so do you find proper do, do you find that they and that it seems as if they all want to live almost in a community as well so yeah. in a complex a development and like you said close to the large education institutions like Oxford and Cambridge right. so is that the trend then do they not like to go to places do they consider universities like Edinburgh as well other um you know university especially because Edinburgh has been affiliated with Royal as, as well in the past so or do you think they just prefer Oxford and Cambridge do they just prefer development as opposed to individual houses could you provide some insight on that Okay, uh, in terms of uh, university choices, I would say for the time being, uh, it may change over time, but for the time being, they're still going to stick to the top two names because, um, say, a lot of uh, the Chinese parents, um, you know, their kids after they graduate, they go back to China. So in the China, Chinese business and government system, they only recognize the, these two top names. So it's about what they care about rather than, you know, what actually, you know, academically, what, what really is better. They do like to live together. It's the same trend in US too, um, because uh, when you have a number of Chinese living together, it's more, there's an economic of scale for the local restaurant, the supermarket, there's an incentive for them to start opening those business. Then it becomes much more easier, convenient for the Chinese to uh, live overseas. It's the same thing when the rich Hong Kong people move to Toronto and Vancouver, they started their own community and they can, because they are grouped together they can afford to have the best restaurants, supermarkets, because there's a way for business owner to scale to this whole group. So that's very important. And in terms of their preference for development and international uh, individual, I would say it depends on the nature of your, uh, your business partner. If it's, of course, it's a professional real estate investment company, they're looking for real bigger projects. But if it's international, I have also seen, say, it's more like an intent individual and your investors they start with one location they start with two right thank you so i am looking at a uh, a, a jackie oh is that you no no is that um, you? i see. think it's a different oh, oh jackie, jackie. Uh, yeah. yes. the similar questions okay it, yeah but also in terms of um, the feng shui and the, the sort of the same interests oh, are the Hong yeah. Kong investors very, very similar to the Chinese and also what areas like Oxford, Cambridge, London or they down south. So for those of us up north, do we have any areas that are, are more interest? Okay, so Hong Kong, it's a great question. Hong Kong investors are even more into feng shui than the mainland Chinese one. Uh, in terms in the Hong Kong uh, property, you know, the level of floors, because uh, in Chinese culture, uh, we don't like number 13. So Hong Kong actually started the trend that in the elevator, there is no level 13. There is level 12A. And then also a level, there's no 14 too sometimes. So they are the hardcore, the most feng shui driven uh, buyers, the Hong Kong investors. Um, outside Oxford, Cambridge, I would say you can also look into potential area near the good private uh, public middle schools um, because the kids, they come to UK as early as the age of eight years old. So anywhere there are, uh, what's the word, like middle schools, uh, these are also great places that you can market to the Chinese parents. Thank you. I, I can see there's a ton of questions in the chat and I'm really aware that we've come to the absolute end of our session today. Um, so Tess, there's, there's going to be lots of questions here. Um, what I'm going to do is I know that you, I'm just seeing if there's anything here that's uh, Hong Kong buyers. There was something here that was amazing. Um, a really, really good question, but I will come back to it. So Tess, um, obviously you have already your academy that's um, up and running and it has been a while. Um, is there anything you can share with, um, with us? So if people want to take this further, really deep dive into, um into this subject obviously we've had some questions on feng shui if anyone's not familiar with what that is it's um how's the best way to quickly like in one sentence test to describe what that okay. means so it's 
um, I would say it's a it's a series of traditional beliefs that Chinese people have that I think are will infect your wealth, your health, and love and and, and life. And the bigger stake you have, uh, the more uh, the Chinese is into because you can't afford to have anything wrong. Uh, say you uh, invested you know, billions and millions into this property, you can't afford to have anything go wrong. So they are more right. willing to, especially in, to want to look into this. Even when luxury brands, when they open stores in China, they look at the feng shui too, <laughs> to make wow. sure, you know, you know, make sure that you have good business, you know, good traffic. I think we need to learn feng shui for ourselves, to be honest with you. Um, so, so yeah, so obviously these things are big subjects. Um, Tess, you can deep dive into these. You've got various, um, I think you've got smaller courses and then obviously your right. bigger course as well. So right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. Share some of that. Yeah, so yeah. Okay, so yeah, just so because these are great questions and uh, I'm, I'm glad because uh, you know, that means you, you've you learned something if you would inspire. So I just wanna you know, mention, I see one question um, uh, that mentioned how would you follow up? And if ads was in Mandarin, but you don't, would you need a VA for this? So specifically related to how to then take action to approach Chinese and to follow up. So if you are interested to actually take action and go explore this opportunity, you know, I can offer, you know, to work with you in these formats. So I do, you know, um, have offer coaching packages. So I have uh, three options. One is the Chinese Investor Roadmap Program. So it's four weeks program. So think of me as your head of Chinese investor development. And here is my 30 day start proposal. So by the end of the, at the very beginning, I'm going to do a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one assessment with you to understand where you are, your business need, uh, where your property or your, the range of property you're looking at, you work with. And then in a week, I'm going to give you a customized proposal, something that you can take action within 30 days about who you should target, how you should target them, and which channel you should use. And then at the end of the 30 days, we're going to you know, review your progress, celebrate your success, and evaluate what are the next steps to establish this referral a relationship or to close the sale. And the second packaging that I have is the Chinese Investor Relationship Success Program. So in this program, it's six week long. You will have everything in the roadmap program. You will have my customized proposal and I will help you review and give you feedback on your communication materials from a Chinese investor's perspective. For example, to review your email, to check your Facebook copy or help you uh, review your Facebook targeting or help you using uh, WeChat and also give you further guidance on the Chinese client. For example, the Chinese lead client responded to you, but you're not sure what is his true intention. Is he interested in or if he want to work with you in a different way? I can help you with that. And again, at the end of the program, we're going to review your progress, celebrate your success and determine the best next step to further chase down the sale. And the third program you can enroll is the, that's the full, pro, full program. It's a Chinese investor lead generation accelerator. It's 10 weeks long. So you will, I, I will cover everything in the previous two programs. On top of that, I will give you step-by-step -step guidance on how to use a high net worth brainstorming system to build a very structured Chinese client referral network of your own. I will teach you how to do research, how to evaluate their potential and motivation to work with you, how to design an offer that will incentivize them and how to reach out to these Chinese uh, potential partners and uh, communicate with them, both the referral partners in China and in UK. I will also give you step-by-step -step guidance on reaching out to Chinese entrepreneurs directly to their emails, how to gauge their interests. Are they ready, interested in a real estate investment? You know, um, 
how do you pitch to them depending on the nature of their business. So to give you a comparison of the, these three pack, uh, programs, oh, to give you an example. So in the third and the third uh, program, so I will give you examples like this. So this is a advertisement, uh, Facebook ads targeting Chinese investors, because I get targeted a lot. <laughs> I'm the demographic that I mentioned. So I will show you exactly what they mean on this kind of ads, why they put this first, why they highlight this, and how does this speak to a Chinese investors and say, you know, how do you get their information and what, what kind of, either you're trying to do a free giveaway or consultation or, how do you get them, you know, interested to reach out to you? So this is a comparison of the three uh, programs. You can see um, what are the elements in each of the programs. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I was going to say, Tess, as well. Um, would there be? Um, I mean, obviously, this is specifically. Um, helps people in real estate for people Oops, it, would it be possible for the people that aren't oh sorry darling um, would it be possible for the people that aren't property to um have something mm -hmm. like this to support them if they want to break into that chinese market is there um because obviously you come from retail there's people here that that have um businesses to do with well-being as I said yes we've got artists we've got people in finance so could it be adapted to that too Yes, absolutely. Because uh, this is the, yeah. because this method is focused on what Chinese clients want. It's not a course teaching you about real estate. And once you understand what Chinese clients want, and you can provide value in that specific area, you can resonate yeah. with them, right? Because say yeah. I start help Harry Winston bring in wealthy Chinese, not because I know about diamonds, 4C, uh, clarity. It's because I know how to do business development with Chinese clients. And our expert in the store, the gem gemologist, they understand diamond. But it's the same thing. You are the expert in your field. And on top of that, if you understand how to do business development, client development with Chinese clients, it will help your business. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I feel like you're my special weapon and I'm reluctant to share you with anyone, <laughs> but I know that's really selfish. Um, um, I'm having the, <laughs> this, I'm having the enrollment uh, form here. So um, it will close by this Sunday. So on this form, the, uh, I don't have a payment option yet. And um, this is something uh, I guess need, need help figure out with Liz, like what's the best way I can sort in, that. Yeah, yeah, that UK and the US. So um, I can, That's I have this link here on um, this. Is it better for me to yeah, put this see. link in the group or what's the? Yes, yeah, I've let you into the uh, mastermind, I think. Okay. So you can actually, you can put that link in directly into that mastermind Facebook group and everybody here and the people that didn't actually get to see this tonight can connect with you um, okay. there. Yeah. But maybe we'll do when I upload this as well. You're really welcome to do um, as I said, a post and do a live post into the group, or you can talk about what we uh, like a little synopsis of what we've done today. And this offer is um, incredible, really. So uh, as I said, I don't get anything for this. I'm very reluctant. I've had yeah. tests in my back pocket now for a year, but <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> You're yeah, out I've... there in the world now. Yeah, I will, I will put the link in the group for now and uh, don't worry, I can, or Liz can share that in the group. I can do later. that as well, yeah. don't worry. Yeah, absolutely. You're getting lots of, um, lots of positive feedback tests and I knew you would and you're Wonderful. just an amazing person to work yeah. with as well. Because it's very intimidating. That's the thing that I want to say I know. before we go on. Oh, I know. Right. But yeah, oh, I just an intimidating mentioned subject. Um, it's not intimidating, but I know I keep, 
um, sometimes get feedback, Tess, this is too much. This is overwhelming. Well, I say, oh, but I want to give them as much mm. value as I can. This is, this is, Tess, this is like yeah. too overwhelming. Like, no, really? No. Like, yeah. No. You're, no, you're amazing. I think it's just, um, I, I think, no, you, this has been amazing. This has been perfectly pitched. No, I mean, um, the subject of chi Chinese investors feel so far away from so many of us. Um, and someone in the chat said there about Indian investors as well. It's absolutely, it's, it's having somebody, you have to have somebody that really deeply understands it like you do, Tess. It's really important. So, um, yeah, you are, you, uh, that's the thing. I'm, as I said, I'm really reluctant to share you with the whole world, Tess, but that would be incredibly <laughs> selfish to keep you to myself. But it is so important and I just believe in you so much. And I, and I know that what you've done, um, you know what you've done in your career has put you into an incredible place so you can connect with these people that all you know are constantly constantly asked all the time how do you break this market how do you break into the us how do you break into china how do you break into india you find people like you that understand so um i just want to say thank you so so much I will, um, I'll put this, I'll actually put that, if you don't mind, I can put that offer into the group, um, Tess. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, I can put that into the group, into the mastermind group, that last slide. I'll put your contact details. Can people just connect with you just via email as well? I know we do a lot of email, yes, don't we? Yes, of course. Um, I don't know, am I still sharing a screen? <laughs> yeah? Yes, no? you are. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let your Christmas list come up or anything. So, yeah. So, yeah, this is my um, email address. So feel free to reach out to me. Yeah. Perfect. Brilliant. Yeah, sorry, can I be, where, where are you based, Tess? Oh, Seattle. Oh, Seattle's here in, yes. in the States. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I didn't pick that up. I was going to ask Liz if she's invited you to any of her events, but... I no, wish I'm trip. jealous. Yeah. Listen, there's oh. happy hour, oh there's God. drink, there's Mayfair. I'm jealous. Yes. <laughs> one of these days, one of these days, I'm going to, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to get you over. Or oh, in fact, we should come over to Seattle actually. Yeah. Um, yeah and we'll you being there is a whole yeah. You being there is a whole other story that we haven't had time to talk about today. But Tess is a very well, you probably gathered that. She's a very clever lady. Um, so there's a there's a lot of Seattle, um, what do we call them? Like, um, uh, it's like New Silicon Valley millionaires, like milling around you all the time, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. The richest, two richest people in the world are in Seattle. <laughs> That's yeah, the Bill exactly. Gates and the Jeff Benzo. <laughs> yeah, precisely. So Tess is surrounded by me. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, we have yeah, it's a very interesting culture here. Yes. It's, well, I've got my sights set on a on a, a Seattle um, dating for nerds um, business, but we'll talk about that another day. Oh, that is um, fun. But um, yeah, we definitely want to do that. But thank you again so much. Thank you for for going over the time as well. Um, really, really love. Always love talking to you. As I said, Tess is very clever, but also a very amazing, amazing lady, a beautiful friend. And thank you so, so much for your time tonight and your amazing offer. Goodness me. And um, like I said, I'm really reluctant to share because you, you, there's only one of you and there's no one like you I've ever met. So thank you millions. Um, I shall say you can save the chat, Tess, if you like as well. I think if you everyone can save the chat, um, okay. I shall make save sure that Tess chat. stays in your life. Um, I think you can right click on the three dots. Um, so the next session of Overseas Investors will come at a lunchtime. Um, and uh, I will, um, I'll let you know because I'm pinning down this other person, uh, but it's not China, it's not Chinese. If you want Chinese investors, there's only one person in the whole world I'll go to and that is Tessa. So again, thank you so much, my darling. You're amazing. Um, thank you. Yeah, I better go off to that party. <laughs> And might be missed um and yeah the recording will come soon so actually tess is uh, holding this meeting actually now so whenever you're ready darling you can just send me over send okay. me over the recording we'll okay okay thank you so much thank you so much have a lovely day you can unmute if you want and say goodbye nice thank you Thank you. Bye. 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 Enjoy yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, have fun. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Tess. Bye bye. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, bye now. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Tess. Have a good, really amazing Thank evening. You. And you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.